Welcome back, everybody. Uh, our next section, we're going to be talking about the Nexus 2000 uh, fabric extenders. But before we get into that, there's a bunch of questions that we had on the break uh, that I wanted to address, uh, mainly about some of the comparisons between uh, VDCs and some of the other technologies and also about the, uh, the line cards. Uh, one of the things that Mark mentioned is that uh, VDCs are similar to uh, SDRs in iOS XR. Uh, the, basically, either of the features is used to virtualize the physical resources of the chassis. So same, similar to like context in the, uh, the ASA. Uh, one of the main differences, though, is that with SDRs in iOS XR, you have to have one dedicated route processor per logical router. So typically what that means in, in a real deployment, if you're using like CRS1 or CRS3, is that for each SDR, you're going to have two PRP or two route processors. So one is the primary and one as the, uh, the standby. Uh, in the case of Nexus, we have this supervisor that's basically uh, virtualized between the different uh, logical routers inside that individual uh, soup. So with uh, iOS XR, basically the only thing that they're sharing is just the backplane for the purpose of like uh, power for the fans, for the access to the, uh, to the fabric. But then we have separate route processors that are controlling the, uh, the individual line cards. Okay, another difference is that in iOS XR, uh, when you do the allocation for the SDRs, uh, for the vast majority of versions and hardware, you can only allocate full line cards to SDRs. So as Mark was talking about before with the VDCs, one of the uh, things that's really flexible about it is that you can uh, allocate the line card resources on, based on the port grouping. So there's some individual line cards that have a port grouping of one, where if I were to have 32, uh, I believe it's the 32 port 1 gig M1 card that you can allocate any individual interface uh, because there's just one port per group. So I could say that ports 1 through 5 go to VDC1, ports you know, 6 through 10 go to VDC2. Um, in iOS XR, you can't really do that. You generally have to, to allocate the full entire line card uh, to the individual uh, SDR. I believe in some of the, the, the newest hardware for CRS3, uh, you can do that if you try to allocate an individual SIP um, to an SDR, but most of the time it's not like that. It's normally on a per um, line card uh, basis. Uh, there were a couple other questions here. Uh, there's a couple of questions on VPC and FEXs. We're going to, uh, we'll come back to that. Uh, there were uh, some logistics questions like the rack rentals in the workbook. Um, we're going to have an announcement on that next week uh, to be a little bit more specific about when the, uh, the re release schedule for that is. Uh, the recordings for this class are going to start being published uh, probably sometime next week. Um, and then also the slides for this class are going to be published with the, uh, the recordings. Uh, so right now I really have no way to send the slides out to everyone, so those are just going to come with the, uh, with the recordings uh, afterwards. Um, there was a question, uh, in the lab exam, are they going to use SOUP1 or SOUP2? Uh, I would assume they're going to use SOUP1, but at the end of the day it doesn't really matter because it's the same, it's the same functionality between SOUP1 and SOUP2. Really the main difference, like Mark was talking about, is the number of VDCs that you have and then whether you have the admin VDC or not. Uh, but I believe the admin VDC doesn't actually start until 6.1 and we're using 6.0. So I don't believe that, you, that that would be an issue to begin with. I'm not 100% sure if 6.0 even supports SOUP2. Um, so probably based on that case, they're going to have to be using SOUP1. Uh, a couple other questions. Does switching between VDCs, is it possible without having a physical loopback between the ports? Uh, now, switching between the VDCs, yes, from a, from a management point of view. You, you don't have to have a physical loopback uh, between them in order to do uh, just management access for them. But anytime you want to actually forward packets in the data plane, then yes, you do need to have a, a physical uh, connection. So like in this case, we can see here with, with our topology, basically um, there's only two physical boxes. So there's the physical 7K1 here. Uh, so this is the, the first chassis. And then there's the second one uh, over here. So each of them we have split it into uh, four different VDCs. Uh, this one here is the default. This one here is the default, so numbers one and five. Those are the ones that are going to be controlling the other, uh, the other VDCs. Uh, but the only way to pass packets in the data plane between them is to have es essentially what turns out to be the physical loopback, because you're coming from the line card back to itself. 
Um, what this is used in a lot of times also is for like in the Catalyst 6500, if you have two VRFs, two uh, virtual routing and forwarding instances, and you want to leak traffic between them, that's the way that you have to do it, that you, you send a port out and then come back. On one side, you have one end of the link in one VRF. On the other side, you have it in, in another VRF. And then the routers are treating them as, uh, as independent processes, which is, which is essentially uh, what's happening here. Now, um, another key point, and I'm not 100% sure if uh, Mark mentioned this or not, but I want to just show a, a quick demo on this. If we look at the, uh, the command line here, and let's log into the, uh, to two of the, the um, two of the, the VDCs. Okay, so I have a connection open to uh, this box right here, so the, the default VDC, and then also to the, uh, the second one. So N7K1-2 uh, and N7K1-1. Uh, if we look at the uh, management interfaces, let's say show IP interface brief VRF uh, management, this link is 192.168.0.71 uh, slash 24. And the other link, likewise, if we show IP interface brief VRF uh, management, this is 192.168.0.72 uh, slash 24. So basically it means that they're on the same layer three network, they're also on the same layer two network. Because physically, uh, what this looks like is that we essentially have all of the switches plugged into this central uh, management switch in the middle. So Nexus 7K1 on its supervisor has that management zero port. And then the same with N7K2, uh, the second physical chassis, has the management zero. And then as well as the, uh, the 5Ks, uh, then there's like some MDS boxes, there's some other routers that are connected to uh, the management switch. Uh, but the key here is that if we were to actually go to the CLI of the management switch, and let me get onto the, admin interface of it here. And if we look at the show CDP neighbors, uh, what we're actually going to see is that the individual VDCs will appear multiple times on the same physical port. So this is going to be, uh, let's say like N7K2-5, 6, 7, and uh, 8. So notice all of these are physically connected to port faster than at 0, 7. Because when we look at the, the physical management wiring, um, that's what this port is here, which is F0 slash uh, 7. So even though, uh, even though it's one physical link, it looks like uh, four different logical links because we have separate IP addresses and we have separate, uh, separate MAC addresses. This is essentially what's allowing me to open multiple windows to them because I have individual Telnet sessions that are open to uh, the command line. But what we'll also see is that if we try to pass packets between them, so if I ping 192.168.0.72 out VRF management, the VDC the management process, whatever is happening behind the scenes, does not allow the traffic to leak uh, through the management interface or through any physical interface. So like in the case of ASAs, we have the notion of shared interfaces, where you may have like a, a couple physical inside interfaces, and then you have one shared physical outside interface that goes out towards the, uh, the public network. So you essentially have contexts that are overlapping on the outside. Uh, in the case of Nexus, that's similar to what we have here, but just for the management interface, but it doesn't allow the traffic to go out uh, and then back in. And this is actually a really uh, important point to note here, because when we start to talk about virtual port channels and we look at the peer keep alive link, we're going to see a situation that if we tried to run a virtual port channel that is going to go between uh, two VDCs that are part of the same physical box. So let's say here, and of course we're going to come back to this in more detail when we actually get to, uh, to VDCs, but let's say that we have uh, these two chassis here, so N7K11 uh, and N7K12. These are essentially going to be the virtual port channel uh, peers. 
So normally, uh, between them, there's some control plane protocols that need to run. Uh, one of them is, is going to be a basic keep alive that they send UDP packets back and forth just to make sure that the remote chassis is still there. It's like a hello, like an OSPF or your other uh, control plane protocols. So this is, uh, this is called the peer, uh, the peer keep alive link. The problem you're going to run into, though, is that if the peers are inside the same VDC, it doesn't allow you to pass traffic over the management interface within the same physical box. So there are some workarounds for it that we can do uh, basically just to, to take an interface that is not management zero and then use that for the peer keep alive. Uh, but it, it is an important point to note about uh, the, the functionality of the, uh, basically the, like the inter-process communication of the VDCs. Normally it has to go out a physical link and then come back in even if it's going from the same line card to uh, the same line card. Okay, there's another question about the IP addresses and the, uh, the MAC addresses. Let's take a look at the, uh, on the command line here, if we go to the access server, uh, this is where the console ports of uh, the, uh, all the chassis are plugged in. So this is basically a, uh, I believe this is a 2811. So it's a 2811 that's got a, a 16 port uh, octal card or 16 port async card. If we look at the show ARP, you'll notice that on the, uh, these addresses here, the 192.168.70s, the first two, these are talking about the first two VDCs of chassis one. Uh, the next four are talking about the next four VDCs of chassis two. But notice here, the, the MAC addresses are incrementing for each one of the VDCs. So even on the management port, the, the internal VDC manager knows that we need to have unique IP addressing and unique MAC addressing for the link. So it's, it's similar to having like a secondary addressing on the link, but also having secondary MAC uh, addresses. So people can go outside in to talk to the different VDCs, and the VDCs can go from the inside out on the management but we're not able to cross uh, communicate between the, uh, the management ports within uh, the VDCs. Okay, so we could have a case, let's say that we wanted to connect uh, these two chassis over here, and you'll see in the, the, in the diagrams, some of these, these platforms are listed more than once. Uh, so th there's only two physical Nexus 7K chassis, and there's only two physical uh, 5K and 2K chassis. But you'll see the way that we're denoting into the diagram is actually multiple times. So here's 5K1, 5K2. And then 5K1 and 5K2 are also listed over here because you're basically creating multiple logical topologies based on the, uh, the physical wiring. So for example, as, as long as these two 7Ks are in separate physical chassis, so this one is part of N7K2, uh, this one is part of N7K1, they would be able to talk over management zero. And we can actually test that if we were to go to like uh, N7K2-5 and ping on uh, ping to 192.168.0.71 on VRF management. This is going to be allowed uh, because the, uh, the traffic is going in and out different physical uh, devices. So it's just one of the minor caveats, actually one of the many minor caveats that we're going to run into with these, uh, these platforms, uh, that there, uh, there's some strange hardware requirements that you'll see. Uh, and this is the type of the st stuff, these type of level of details that you're really going to have to know uh, for the, uh, the scope of the lab exam, really to figure out uh, exactly you know, how all of these features work together.